I want to start off the video by saying this. First and foremost, I actually didn't think this device was going to exist. All the indication, all the things that we've heard from Sony all throughout the year was that the Xperia 1 Mark IV was going to be the it thing. Uh, and it's pretty much later in the year for them to actually announce it. But in a way, I'm kind of really excited to see that this device actually exists. And the fact that this device is nothing like, well, let's just say this. They've done so much improvements on this device. It almost doesn't look like it's an Xperia 5. This is TK. Sabaha, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Let's talk about all of the new features on the Xperia 5 Mark IV. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified to whenever we have new videos on the channel. Okay, so we're going to start off by first talking about the packaging itself. This is a fully biodegradable box, meaning everything in here is biodegradable and you only get the phone in the package. I've actually already done an unboxing. I've already pushed it out on my Instagram account. But the overall experience here is that Sony is really driving to the zero uh, waste kind of approach. If you're getting the phone, you're not going to get a cable or a charger and the box itself is fully biodegradable. Definitely very nice. I like the aesthetics, but this is something that we need to understand. Now, first thing I'll also say is that the battery on here has been expanded to be a 5000 milliampere battery and again, still supporting the 30 watt charger. So if you still have a charger from an earlier generation, Xperia 5, Xperia 1, you're not going to have any problems. It should still charge your device the same way and still gives you the benefit of using the full potential of the battery that we have in here. Again, 5000 milliampere in the same form factor. Like seriously okay so we covered the fact that it has wireless charging we cover the fact that it has a 5000 milliampere battery and of course nfc let's talk a little bit about the cameras that we have in the back this is also a slight difference from what we've seen before with the xperia 5s but also a little bit of a difference from what we saw with the xperia 1 mark 4. the third camera is not a dual a dual uh, basically focal length camera it's a single focal length at 60 millimeter the main camera is still a 24 and the main uh, the ultra right obviously is going to be the 16. so it's slightly different experience but Keep this in mind, all three of them are going to record 4K 120 frames per second. All three of them have auto-focusing and 20, per, uh, 20 burst shot uh, recording. Now, only the, uh, the 24 and the 60 will have uh, OIS. On the left side or on the right side when you're holding it facing you, the fingerprint sensor with the power button is going to be present here. Volume rocker, dedicated camera button, of course, with the better uh, response here. Of course, pressing and holding it will launch the camera app, which is typical to what we've seen before. And that's basically an iconic look now. The ability of taking pictures with a Sony is literally down to the fact, even if the dis display is off, you press and hold the camera and you boom, jumping into the action. No other device has something that this fast. Again, I didn't double press a button. I pressed and held and it went directly into the camera pro app not the standard camera. Now, I do want to mention the fact that the front-facing camera also got an uplift. Now we have a similar experience as the Xperia 1 Mark IV. 4K, uh, 4K recording on this is going to be very capable. And one of the biggest things that we definitely appreciate here is that we also have the Music Pro application, the Video Pro benefit, gives us the ability of recording that 4K 120. So if we jump into the app right now, I can go into the menu, record, you see right there, 120 frames per second. I can jump into the 24 and jump back in here. It's still recording 4K 120. And of course, if I go back into the menu one more time and go into the 16 millimeter, and that's going to give us again, same thing, 4K 120 frames per second. Now, one thing I also will mention here is the streaming functionality is built into the camera app here as well. So it's built into Video Pro, the monitoring app, as well as the game enhancer. And we'll get into that in a second. But you can definitely jump in all the way to the bottom, log into your YouTube account, and you can use the cameras in here to stream. If you're using this with the external display, the kit that Sony made for the Xperia Pro I, that's going to make it even more functional so that you can use the main sensors on the back and still see yourself running. Now, I'm going to be recording some content using that kit, but it's just to keep in mind that the display from the Xperia Pro I works with both the Video Pro and the Camera Pro as a video source. So you can connect them and be able to see what you're doing while you're using the main cameras on the back. The front facing camera definitely did get an update, but it's not going to be the most powerful camera on this device. It still is on the main sensors on the back. Now, we are running the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. So this is going to be uh, the best performance that we're going to be getting. Very similar to what we saw with the Xperia 1 Mark IV. So 1148 on the, multi on the single core and 3200 on the multi-core. Very straightforward and very easy. Um, in the US, this is going to support 5G and it is going to be available a lot sooner than what we've seen in the past. Uh, now, unfortunately, in the studio here, I wasn't able to get a much faster connection. But what I'm going to try to do here before is, although I'm showing you guys the 45, 6 uh, for the speeds that I'm able to get, I'm going to try to put for you here on the right side uh, more of an outdoors while I'm out going about. And just a reference as well, I'm running this on Project Phi, and that's what the connection I'm able to get indoors here in my home. So 
no issues, very easy, very straightforward. Uh, the game enhancer has also been updated and now we have the ability of using streaming from it. Um, one of the other options is also this ability of playing PUBG or the basically new state of uh, PUBG Mobile at 90 frames per second built in, as well as the ability to play in 90 frames per second on Call of Duty Mobile. Again, a lot of cool little unique things running on this 1080p, 120 frames per second, 6.1 inch display. Um, it has Android 12 built in, of course. Hopefully, we'll be able to see Android 13 early next year. Uh, a very close to stock experience to what we normally see from Sony experiences and, of course, Pixels. Uh, we have the Google feed on the left side and, of course, uh, more applications in here. You can swipe up for the app drawer, close. Everything works and just runs beautifully. All the customizations that we've had before are all present here. Support, digital well-being, uh, passport, you know, all the different things that you want to do. Again, biometrics is going to be sitting on the right side. And of course, you can customize your opinion or what your appearance there. Now, as far as the camera application, and I want to definitely give you guys a, a sample of some of that. We're going to do that all together actually a little bit later on because I want to show you guys content from my trip. Well, I'll say this. I, although I'm starting the video here in Los Angeles in my studio, I'm going to be ending the video in Kando in Idaho with Sony as part of their event. So I was actually lucky enough to be invited there. So some of the content I want to share with you guys, I want to actually use the Music Pro app to voice over that, but also share with you, get the con share with you guys the content straight from my experience here in Los Angeles and also while traveling. So let's talk a little bit about the Music Pro app and it's specifically because this application is something that I did not get a chance to play with on the Xperia 1 Mark IV. This application allows us to use the microphone, specifically the bottom firing, uh, the bottom microphone on this closest to the USB-C to record audio straight into the Xperia device. And utilizing the studio tuning uh, capabilities, this enables us to be able to basically process that audio through the web and through a service with Sony to give us studio grade quality audio, even if I'm outside with a lot of noise. So one thing I wanted to say, again, this is just me demonstrating it. I'm not sure why it's taken a little bit longer. Let's go ahead and do that one more time. We'll have the ability of doing denoising, de-reverb, mic uh, simulation, as well as studio simulation. You're able to turn on different options. There is a trial version of this, which is what gives me about 100 megabytes to use. And of course, after that, it becomes a subscription about 400, I think it's like $4 a month or something like that. I've used uh, on this track 7.2 megabytes, and I think the other one is about eight. So I still have a little bit of ways to go, but I definitely want to be able to record. And then I didn't want to use too much of my data uh, package here with the trial so that I can actually share with you guys that voiceover at the end. So Music Pro, really nice. Video Pro, really, really nice. And of course, we have Camera Pro, and that's gonna be present in there. Um, and again, one of the biggest things I'll probably will say is the experience that we get in here, the ability of jumping between the different lenses. We still have that digital zoom between a, a, each camera lens. And of course, we're able to jump in here, do the burst high, burst low, uh, self-timer, you know, HDR continues uh, on low, all of the beautiful things that we wanna be able to do. And of course, utilizing the ability of actually just, you know, using that, that multi-point uh, basically focusing and of course uh, not only IAF for humans but also for pets. Starting off with the camera demo here I'm using the vlogging kit. Now this obviously includes the display, the grip, I'm also using an external microphone with the main lenses on the back. The main benefit here obviously is the ability of being able to see myself while using the best cameras on this device. The overall performance here is a well-balanced experience across all three lenses, the 24, the 16, or even the 60 millimeter. But the big difference here is that I'm able to actually use this as a production style. I can vlog from here, I can also live stream from here, and that's the benefit of the new features. So the video application, the Video Pro, allows us not only to record all the way up to 4K 120 on all three lenses, but I can stream from that same system straight to YouTube with the vlogging kit without missing a beat. Now, of course, the main benefit that we got with the brand new system is that now we actually record 4K 30 frames per second with the front-facing camera. Yes, this is the front-facing camera on the Xperia Mar uh, 5 Mark IV. And the benefit, of course, is that we can shoot all the way up to 4K 30. And that's because they utilized the 12 megapixel sensor that we had from earlier generation of Xperia's, which means we're no longer stuck with an eight megapixel. Your video calls and your front-facing video is gonna look really good. So here comes the audio sample from the Music Pro as a voiceover over some beautiful imagery on the Xperia 5 Mark IV from either Los Angeles or even Idaho uh, during Kando from Sony, which by the way was an amazing event for creativity as well as discovering everything about Sony, including that introduction shot that you saw at the beginning of the video that was shot with the Sony AirPeak on a Sony camera and of course featuring yours truly, the Xperia 5 Mark IV. So really a lot of cool things. Uh, as far as the game enhancer, let's go ahead and launch PUBG, uh, the new state game. I'll give it a second to load. 
Once that's gone, you're able to turn it on and you're able to jump into different configurations. You have screenshot, screen recording, focus mode, uh, performance mode as we typically have. But now we also have streaming mode that's present right there on the top. You can customize, it's connected to the YouTube channel. Let's go ahead and bring it back down. I think it's the game that's loading, so it's gonna play around a little bit. Customize uh, not only from the title, the thumbnail, the, uh, the st basically the uh, stream layout, all the different things that you want to be able to customize in there. And of course, 1080p 60 frames per second is going to be running over here as far as your best performance. And you can basically stream it straight to YouTube from the game without missing a beat. And of course, we still have HS power control. So if you ever want to run a power connection into the actual device without necessarily using the power. So let's go ahead and do that in here. We'll go into the settings and you can definitely see right there. HS power control enables us to use external power to run the phone without charging the battery gives us a much cooler experience and of course extended play without ever having to miss a beat. So you can run this on a, let's say an external power bank and of course utilize the benefit. So the ability of using the external display, the ability of recording studio create audio, uh, recording studio grade video, uh, of course using external audio and also listening to our audio using the headphone jack when we're using the video so you can actually monitor the audio directly from there is just absolutely fantastic. Let me share with you guys real quick a couple of samples of the gaming here on the Xperia 5 Mark IV. Target's in sight. Enemy contact. Take her down. There is no question that gaming on Xperia devices within the last few years have had a massive step up from any other device on the market. The overall 21 by 9 aspect ratio, that wide format, enables us to actually have the ability to play in games while our fingers are not actually covering most of the gameplay on the display. It's even better on the Xperia 1 Mark IV. And if you remember at the beginning when the 5 and the 4 used to represent slightly different experiences, the 5 was always more of the gaming one. That was the one that Sony gave us more of the 120 frames per second, the small, small more nimble format. And they stuck to the core. They gave us a bigger battery. We still have all the functionalities, the latest SOC. Now it's not the 8 plus, but I still think they're able to leverage some of the uh, management uh, software that we have in there, as well as HS power control, so that the system doesn't run too hot. Now, for me, I am absolutely blown away with everything that they've done. Uh, 5,000 milliampere battery. Uh, we have wireless charging. We have a much more well-balanced camera experience on the back, although slightly different with the 60 millimeter lens. And I've actually grown to appreciate what Sony's doing for us there. Uh, now, that again is more of a differentiator. This is what the 5 series will do differently than the 1. The 1 has technically four cameras, although it's three cameras with two focal lengths on the third one where the 5 now focuses on three primary lenses, the 16, 24, and 60. Still a very good camera, um, basically a very good kit camera experience if you wanna go, as opposed to having to lug around. If you're an alpha user, you probably carry at least two to three lenses with you when you travel. So this is definitely very nice. Um, for what you saw there with the pictures, again, some of them were taken in Los Angeles, the videos also, some of them were taken through my trip to Idaho uh, with Sony, with Kando. So this is definitely a, uh, a built up of an experience and I really hope that you guys are enjoying this. And just to say this, again, we're not going to have to wait too long, even in the US, to be able to get our hands on this. And I'm hoping that they'll have some kind of promotions running on there. So without further ado, I do want to say first and foremost, thank you to Sony for allowing me to check out and, of course, test out the Xperia 5 Mark IV. But not only that, the invitation over to Kando to be able to part, be part of that event as well with all the other creators out there. And of course, allow me to be basically a representative of Xperia because again, I'm a big Xperia fan. We're talking on, a, on, a, on an alpha camera. And of course you saw, as, as you saw not that long ago, we did that video on the Xperia Pro I, gaining some of those live streaming functionalities that are also built in here. A lot of good things. So thank you very much for the support. Like and subscribe as usual. I'll see you in the next video.